Alan Testmasters, honored guests, uh, just came in for one moment to uh, turn our audio visual thing on. So I'm going to start with basically, uh, when we watch the business shows, and I don't know how many people are really interested in such things, uh, we talk about FANG. And at first I didn't really know about it, but FANG basically represents like uh, the big guns in, in, the, in the tech sector. And basically they, they dominate the financial, uh, you know, they, they dominate the financial. They've grown so big they're, they're crazy. Uh, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. So there's, there's a lot to this. I'm, I'm not going to read everything, but uh, generally uh, they all have common characteristics. They're, they're disruptive in their industries. Uh, they're driven by a lot of advertising or they've, they've taken over marketplaces like, like Amazon is very big. Uh, Facebook, uh, you know, is really kind of like the social media that recognized uh, you know, family and friends are they're in long distance, and it basically provided the first uh, global means of communication where you can share pictures and stuff like that. Uh, both of these companies, uh, they move remarkably quick. Uh, they identify markets, uh, they identify new products, they're constantly expanding their reach. Um, and you know, in general, and this is kind of limited, but they do control economic activities. When these stocks move in a meaningful way, uh, the entire and the entire market can move uh, just as a side effect. Uh, one of the big problems Facebook has is uh, a lot of this is because they're so big. Uh, we have government regu regulations, and we're talking about monopolies, antitrust, question questions of privacy and First Amendment rights. Uh, just to give you some idea, these, these numbers are, are kind of dated, uh, but you can see Apple, uh, Apple over the past year, they, they had a $1 trillion market cap, and market cap is simply the price of the shares times the number of shares outstanding. Uh, it's not really, in my mind, it's not really a representation of true value, it's more a representation of sentiment. Uh, as to what they perceive it's worth. So you can see Amazon and Apple are kind of neck, neck and net. Uh, Netflix, uh, 147 billion, uh, you know, it's no slouch. And, you know, say Facebook is kind of in the, in the middle there. Uh, revenue, uh, this, is, this is more a measure of, uh, you know, how much money they're actually coming in. Now we're on the business side of things. And we can see Apple, Apple is killing it, <laughs> you know, is what it boils down to. This, this is remarkable when you consider, like, their primary product is phones. And it, it's not a diverse product set as, like, say, Amazon, where Amazon is selling pretty much everything, phones. And, and that's kind of like our, our number one market piece. Uh, I'm going to skip these. These are just kind of like the, uh, the visionaries uh, behind these things, Mark Zuckerberg. I don't know if you've ever heard, heard the names, but he, he was pretty young. Uh, Facebook itself, 82% of revenues is driven uh, through, through advertising. Uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, he started out just selling books and originally sold books out of the trunk of his car. Uh, now he sells books. He's got Whole Foods, all kinds of different kinds of markets. Uh, they're actually going towards their doing delivery. Um, and they're also huge in the web service market, uh, which, which is interesting in itself because the whole internet runs on cloud, essentially. And Amazon Web Services is like the biggest cloud. They dominate the cloud market. Yet, web service is only 9% of Amazon's income. You know, so it's, it's, it's very small. Um, uh, Tim Cook of Apple, uh, in, uh, yeah, Apple's claim to fame is their industrial design, uh, smooth, slick, everybody wants, everybody wants Apple. 
uh, Reed Hastings of Netflix. Uh, this was just uh, interesting because he recognized technology was changing. Uh, the video was, uh, you know, blockbuster video was dying, and he recognized that like uh, technology was emerging uh, that could change that. Uh, one of the interesting things about Netflix is, as a technologist, uh, Netflix probably pays more than any of these companies for an engineer. But they've got a very unique style in, in the way they keep their people. Uh, they, they hire a team for right now. And so if it's like in a growth mode, it takes a certain type of team. And if it's a maintenance mode, it's a different type of team. And so they'll turn over their team kind of regular. If, if you're there and you do well, you're, you could be out the door just because you don't fit their profile of what they're looking for. Uh, Google is pretty well known. Uh, you know, they're very big. I, I don't think, uh, you know, it's all advertising for the most part. Uh, Facebook's had a lot of problems. And, and this is really where we get into the, the, the negative part of, of what happens with technology. Um, they came up with a program called This Is My Digital Life. And it was written by a Russian American, just a kid. And it was bought, and ultimately, it shared data and it exposed a data breach. 87 million people got exposed to the data breach. Uh, this is my digital life. So it's one of those things where you kind of like pop into it, and you look at it, and you say, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, and it tells you all about it. It's got a nice little chart of, of uh, your activity on Facebook, more charts. And it, it kind of looks like kind of fun, but uh, ultimately this kind of backs into the work that was done for Cambridge Analytica. And this was this was the whole uh, government WikiLeaks thing. And in, in essence, they, they have a thing where you can click uh, if you click something for ten times, uh, they evaluate better than a work colleague. Uh, if you do, if you click like. 300 times you know you better than your own spouse does. And this is, this isn't that they infer something from you clicking something, it's they infer something from you clicking something and comparing you to a million other people who click the same thing. And so that's what they call big data. So in essence, it's a, it's a heck of a propaganda tool. And this is a lot of what we hear about the collusion and all of that, and kind of like what's at risk is, and uh, you know, I'm going to cut short a little bit, but uh, you know, like the Russians understood and exploited this, and in, in the end, they were able to place ads in front of people who were vulnerable or who shared a like mind, as you know, like here they're talking about uh, targeting like a Pennsylvania work group. And, you know, they're sympathetic to, like, Trump is going to put workers to work. And so, in essence, uh, in my mind, it's, it's a, a vast propaganda tool that uh, um, was, you know, wisely or unwisely exploited by the Russians. So, let's stop there.